supremacy, scapegoating, uh, Jim Comey, Russian interference, fake news, Bernie Sanders. He had the he should he had the audacity to run. Why did he do that? How about he won 22 states and 13 million voters, and they never fully assimilated him back in? And then anytime I okay. respond, anytime I defend myself against these specious allegations that are now leading to death threats, so I really resent it. Anytime I try to respond, I'm seen as ungracious. Why are we sore winners? I'm not a sore winner. I'm a winner. Okay. My guy's a winner. He's an ex-president of the United States. This has to stop, Chris. This incendiary rhetoric of people who just can't admit that they lost. It has to stop because it's it's costing a lot of it's costing a lot of angst. That senior Trump advisor Kellyanne Conway firing back at Team Clinton after Clinton's former communications director Jennifer Palmieri again accused Donald Trump's camp of giving the alt-right movement a platform in the election. Conway says the president elect has been I'm sorry, has denounced the group and she says the Clinton camp should recognize the real reason they lost. Voters just didn't connect with their candidate. Joining us now for a little discussion of all of this, Mark Larson, a conservative Southern California radio host. Leslie Marshall, a syndicated radio host and Fox News contributor, is also there with us. Leslie, what do you think about Kelly Ann Conway's advice? Should the Clinton camp just stop? No. <laughs> well, if they want to, yes. If they want to, no. Last time I checked, we had a First Amendment right uh, to, to write in the Washington Post or anywhere else an op-ed and to give the opinion. I do agree that's not the reason that the uh, Cl that Hillary Clinton lost. Uh, but honestly, I don't think Kellyanne should pay mind to the insults. I get plenty of them online every day. Well, she, uh, she and, says ignore she's... them and they'll go away and, and, and move forward and she... focus on what needs to be done for this country. She says she's gotten death threats because of all this. Now, that's disgusting. I've had death threats, too, from things I've said, and we know that there was a union worker that had death threats from the president-elect's tweet the other day, and that is part of the problem, I think, that Jennifer Palmieri is speaking to, John, which is the continued divisiveness and vitriolic nature, nature of this country right now, and I think it's essential uh, that President-elect Trump stand up and speak to uh, a lot of the hate crimes that are happening and a lot of this division, because he has promised to unite the country. I think we need to see some of that, and I would really like like to see Kellyanne speak to that as well. So, Mark, what do you think about what Jennifer Jennifer Palmieri and the Clinton camp are saying? Yeah, I, I think Jennifer is uh, is using a, whatever a bic lighter or something to light the torch. And uh, despite what Leslie is saying here, I think her side needs some new material. It's always the isms, the racism. It's it's the uh, white supremacy now. It's anti women, anti this, that, whatever. Uh, words do mean things, and they do have results and consequences. And I'm very concerned with, with as this heats up. Sure, both sides should take a look and make sure that they're not fanning flames here, too. But the Democrats, the left in particular, some of the mainstream media have not learned any lesson from the election. They've not figured out how when, when you get into the, the, even though it's free speech, rhetoric that leads to violence in the streets, for example, that's a big concern coming up at the inauguration because activist groups on the left are looking for ways to stir things up, too. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a time to be cautious, but don't blame it all, as they always do, on whoever the conservative or, or non-Democrat side happens to be. Leslie, she seems to be blaming, Jennifer Palmieri, uh, seems to be blaming white supremacists for giving this election to Donald Trump. There aren't enough white supremacists in Michigan and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin to make him the president of the United States, are there? I would agree with you, John. That is not the reason that Hillary Clinton lost, and I've said that before. There are a number of reasons. I mean, she did not visit Wisconsin. She didn't take her husband, former President Bill Clinton's advice, and, and care about the disenfranchised white working class voter. And I think they are really what gave it to Donald Trump and put him over the top in the Electoral College. Burning a bus people that stayed home, uh, African Americans that stayed home, a division in the Democratic Party. The list goes on. So, no, so, but so I do not? think that a lot. A lot of the rhetoric, yeah. to, Mar to Mark's point, I do think a lot of the rhetoric of fanning the flames, um, you know, it is out there. And some of this rhetoric came from our president-elect. And I think that he has a responsibility and the power to stop it. All right. Well, we'll talking well, about a lot responsibility, of that is old Mark, it sounds like a dodge. Yeah. If those are, in fact, the reasons yeah. that, the, that Hillary Clinton lost the election, why not own up to it? 
Well, I don't think she's wired that way. Maybe she needs to go back to Chelsea's apartment, which is the finest medical facility in America, and I guess, and just get rebooted because this this idea it was hers. It happened in 2008. She thought she was entitled. The entitlement class is having heads explode. I guess that's incendiary rhetoric. Sorry. The entitlement class is having a hard time figuring this out that they lost because the issues didn't match a number of Americans who felt disenfranchised. And uh, I think Bernie Sanders probably understands that better than a lot of them because he was disenfranchised by the same Clinton machine. Yeah, it, it, as you point out, uh, Leslie, uh, you know, Bernie Sanders, uh, well, I, I guess it was Kellyanne, uh, Kellyanne Conway who, who said that uh, Bernie Sanders supporters were never fully embraced by the Clinton campaign. And then we, we could get into that basket of deplorables uh, remark. Uh, yes. if, if you say that half of the Donald Trump supporters, which turns out to be a quarter of those who voted in the election, are deplorable, that's not a necessarily a way to you know win friends and influence people. I don't disagree, John, but really, I just don't see the numbers showing that in the exit polls as the reason to why she lost. I cited earlier, I think, the reasons that uh, she lost, and one of which was uh, the division within the Democratic Party and different ideas as uh, to those who were uh, willing to move more center with Hillary Clinton and those who were sticking with Bernie and staying to the left and really just didn't want to stop the revolution. And many of them stayed home or voted for Gary Johnson mm -hmm. or voted for Jill Stein. Those are the numbers. I mean, the numbers don't lie. Uh, those she are the numbers. Pathetic. And that's really why she, she was lost. flawed. She had no, baggage. I don't agree with she that. was a horrible she, candidate. She and she beat him in the popular election by what? Now two points. Yeah, you take over California six, out of that, New York votes. out of that. Well, yeah. So what? The Constitution matters, Leslie. You know that. Come on. I'm not saying the Constitution the doesn't matter, matters. but I can't say you can't say that this is a completely flawed candidate to get that many votes uh, okay, in the, she's in the not, popular she's a human vote. Being. She, that, she's she's mostly flawed. Vote. Okay, mostly flawed then. It's a Christmas season. Even you can smile, Leslie. Come on. We'll, we'll leave it at that. I always smile, and aren't we? And I'll be the first to admit that I and all of us are flawed. We, we'll leave it there. That's on right. This Amen to that. Holiday Friday. Mark Larson, <laughs> Leslie Marshall. Good discussion. Thank you both.